Another really fun first round NCAA tournament game, five versus 12, Gonzaga versus McNeese State. McNeese is, for my money, the best mid-major team in the country. Gonzaga, uh, back in the day, people used to consider them a mid-major. Now I don't think they are allowed to use that term anymore because they exceeded what the mid-major is to college basketball. That's a testament to them. But there's something that feels right about Gonzaga and McNeese in round one this year in particular. Do you agree with me? Let's just start with that. Do you agree that McNeese is the best mid-major team in college basketball? I think James Madison is, and I'm not saying that to troll Michigan State fans. I think James Madison is. Um, but before the season started, my top two Cinderella picks were James Madison and McNeese. Like McNeese is is right there. They're fantastic. That's why you're the G that you are, Brian Ralph. I mean, you give us before the season starts the two teams that are most dangerous in this tournament. Uh, for the record, I do have James Madison second on my list currently. I would have McNeese first, mostly because I think Shahada Wells is a dog i think he's a yeah. killer i think he's the best player in this game and i don't know what gonzaga is going to do to try to stop him it's tough and a lot of times mark few has the obvious coaching advantage in games and he probably still has the coaching advantage i'm not trying to tell you that will wade is a better coach than mark few um but will wade is a damn good coach and that advantage is going to be mitigated i think mcneese has more athleticism in its backcourt than gonzaga does uh, McNeese is a particular deep team, but I think probably has more depth than Gonzaga does. The one thing Will Wade does incredibly well, this McNeese team has done incredibly well, is create situations that allow his guards to get downhill and attack. That's one of the reasons Wells has had such a great season this year. Uh, they run some pick and roll variations that uh, get defenses off guard and, and off balance. And get into the paint. It's focused on getting into the paint, and then you allow your guys to either okay, let's make a play at the rim or kick out to an open shooter because they have another number of guys who are good shooters as well. And Wade knows how to game plan uh, for this. Gonzaga is not an elite defensive team. They're fine. They're not great. The biggest issue is going to be slowing Graham EK uh, if you're McNeese. But Wells, other than, Wells is going to be the best perimeter player on the court in this game. And anytime you have that, you have a legitimate chance to win. What do you think is a bigger mat Sorry, mismatch. Is it Wells with Gonzaga guards, or is it EK with McNeese bigs? It's probably EK with McNeese bigs because Christian Shoemate is a really awesome player. He's McNeese's best front court guy, but he's 6'6", 215. Like, he's somebody who can who can guard Anton Watson and kind of cancel out, cancel out Anton Watson. But EK is a problem. EK is a problem. Column is probably going to be the guy you have uh, on EK and he's going to have to play more minutes than he probably has or would like to. Um, but on the flip side, he's a three point threat himself. He's made about a three a game. I think it's actually right on a three a game at 41% shooting from three. If he can make EK defend on the out on the perimeter um, and get EK in foul trouble, that's what we saw St. Mary's do in the WCC title game. And they were able to really control that game because EK was a non-factor because of foul trouble. You're you're playing Big Nisa's favor there, but Collins is the only the only real guy I think that can that can match him defensively. So it's it's certainly a problem. Yeah, I, this one's really fun on paper for me because like I, as much as I'm saying Shahada Wells is a mismatch, like Gonzaga has good guards and uh, mm -hmm. like I if you have a Nemhard at point guard, you have my attention. I just don't know that I trust him defensively against Shahada. And if I, I would assume maybe they try to hide Nemhard defensively and maybe they have Nolan Hickman take Shahada here. But uh, even then, I still think Shahada should be able to do what he wants in this game or at least put pressure on Gonzaga to like stay out of foul trouble and all of that. Um, with that said, this is a lot of strength on strength profile wise in this game, right? Um, like mm -hmm. it, you go through this. Gonzaga never turns the ball over. McNeese relies on turning teams over. Sixth best turnover rate forced team in the country. Uh, McNeese wants to get to the free throw line. Gonzaga avoids fouls at an exceptional rate. So mm -hmm. to me, uh, it's kind of hard. Like I'm looking at like, what's the category that could swing this game in someone's favor. And outside of Gonzaga second chances, offensive rebounds against McNeese where they're pretty vulnerable there. 
I don't see a ton that swings this game either way. What do you think it could be? I, I don't know if there really is anything. Uh, I think EK foul trouble is one. Mention that McNeese does not have like the, the traditional size to to defend down low. They're re- really good at defending inside the arc. The Southland does not have a lot of big guys, and I want to be fair with that. So like the, some of these numbers are skewed for that reason. Um, but Shoemate, who I mentioned, is one of the nation's leaders in block rate because of his ability to come over on the weak side. C.J. Felder, who comes off the bench for them, uh, is up there as well. He's a smaller, big, he, he's 6'8", 235. Um, I, I think E.K. can can overpower him, certainly, but he's somebody who has shown a, the ability to be an elite shot block and rim protector as well. If I told you a team was top 10 in turnover rate, had a top 30 uh, defense defending inside the arc, was top 30 in block rate, top 10 three-point shooting team in the country, top 25 in turnover rate, meaning they don't give the ball away, you'd be like, yeah, all right, that team could do some things. That, that that sounds like a Gonzaga team that can that can handle some things. It's McNeese. It's not Gonzaga. Yeah. Yeah, it's a complete team, right? And that's it, – it's interesting uh, because Will Wade, I think, deserves a ton of credit for doing this. And- they have lost one game with Will Wade on the sidelines, and it was against Southeastern Louisiana, who was a good team for the Southland. And McNeese shot like 21% from three in that game. They only lost by three on the road. Yeah, it, absurd. And Southeastern Louisiana, the box score up, shot 48% from three, hit 12 threes in that game to win by three at home. So, um, yeah. yeah, I man, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Will Wade in the long term. Like, I would love to know where is Will Wade 10 years from now because I do think there is a world where, like, he's one of the best coaches in all of college basketball, again, ra- rather quickly potentially too, but there's a yeah. lot of risk involved there. Obviously it's just like Mc- McNeese is holding on to a guy that if he stays here, I think is going to absolutely destroy at this level. Um, Gonzaga wise, what's the biggest thing that would give Gonzaga fans hope in this game? Like, does it literally just come down to EK needs to dominate or, is there a swing piece in the backcourt somewhere? Like this is obviously a team that right now not the most confident after the way their mm-hmm. conference tournament ended against St. Mary's. Uh, what what yeah. signs of life do you need to see from them? Uh, Nolan Hickman and or Dusty Stromer are the keys to this game. Graham E.K., I think you know what you're going to get from him uh, unless he's in foul trouble. And I, I keep talking about that because that is so ingrained in my head and I think totally flipped that championship game against St. Mary's that, that they played. But you largely know what you're going to get from him. You largely know what you're going to get from Anton Watson, too. He's been one of the most consistent contributors throughout his entire career. Ryan Nemhard is what he is. He is an awesome point guard, a traditional point guard. But he is not somebody who is going to take over the game offensively from a scoring standpoint, right? So you need some other perimeter guys to do that. No one Hickman and Dusty Stromer have the ability to do so. If if one of them gets you 15 points in this game, 15 to 18 points in this game, you're feeling really good if you're Gonzaga. But both of those guys have also put up stinkers where they score two points on like a one of nine shooting. And that has happened more often than 15 and 18 point outings. Excuse me. But those are the two swing guys for me because we mentioned how good McNeese's backcourt is even beyond Shahada Wells. There's some depth there and some athleticism and some real aggressiveness there. The best Gonzaga teams have had multiple weapons on the perimeter that can beat you both off the dribble uh, with their and then with their passing and just high basketball IQ. These guys have the high basketball IQ and the passing ability. Mark Few offense is going to keep the ball moving their top 10 in efficiency this season for a reason. But you have to have the scoring. You have to have the scoring. Those are the two guys that can, I think, provide it in a way that um, I don't think you can reasonably rely on Nemhard and Watson to do so. Because if Nemhard and Watson both score 20, it doesn't matter. But I, but I, I don't know if that's something you can reasonably expect from them. We're going to do our prediction to end this video. I have a question on each team, and then we'll get to it, and this can be a quick one. Can a Ryan Nemhard nolan hickman backcourt win a national championship, yes or no? No. And it's not because of Ryan Nemhard. Mm, do you want to be more pointed on who it is about then there? Or? Well, it's just. I think Nolan Hickman can consistently play. Okay. 
I think that's fair. Um, McNeese, my question. What's their NCAA tournament ceiling? Regardless of what you think their success will be in this game, how far can this team go? They can go to the second weekend. Like, we have a scenario here where Shahada Wells can take over games against tournament-level teams and be one of the stars of the first weekend. You have an athletic, versatile front line that, aside from, like, traditional low-post defense, uh, can wreak havoc against a number of teams. The style they play, the coach that they have, I have a lot of trust in them. More trust than I do a lot of 12 seeds. I got to look and see who else they would be uh, coming up against uh, as things go on. Like if you, if you get past Gonzaga, Kansas is probably waiting for you. Yep. And that's a Kansas team that is flawed. So I, like, I don't know if they can get past a likely game against Purdue in the sweet 16, but I think McNeese does have the ability uh, to make it to that sweet 16 game. So this is uh this is projecting because we're way far down the road. And if we get there, we'll have a preview for it. Of course I would make the argument and I have made the argument on a couple shows this week already. I think that if I'm Purdue at the top of this region, I'm praying I get Kansas in the sweet 16. And uh, that I, I mean, Gonzaga is an alternative, so you could lump them in, but I would rather play Kansas than McNeese if I am Purdue. And the thought to that is this. Teams that will try and cover Zach Eady traditionally, I think, are toast. If if you try to go one-on-one with him, he's going to kill you. You're not going to disrupt anything. It just is what it is. You need to do it unconventionally. McNeese would have to do it unconventionally. You look at Purdue's games this season, when have they struggled? Nebraska, completely unconventional post-defense. Northwestern. Two traditional posts that are in and out of the game, and they cycle guys through, and they do weird other things with the other guys. Uh, to me, that's how you got to do it. You either got to throw five bigs at him and foul, and this is not a Purdue preview, but it is to say, <laughs> combine that with the demons that Purdue has faced of, oh, God, a 12 seed in the Sweet 16 again? Like, can we? Can Matt Painter really live down another 12 seed in the Sweet 16, and he has to win that game? I just think it's interesting. And uh, I will say, I agree with you. They can make the second weekend. I think there's a world where this team could make a final four run too. I really do. I I was going to say, so the path would be a non Gonzaga like Gonzaga team, Mm -hmm. a Kansas team dealing with injuries, a Purdue team that has demons and then a Tennessee team because of Rick Barnes. Yep. And there's, I, I mean, on paper, all those teams have reasons to think they're way better than McNeese. But yep. there's also one reason, one big reason to be skeptical of each one. We'll see how good this McNeese team really is. All right. My bookie is the exclusive partner of Sleepers Media throughout the month of March. They have some awesome stuff going on. We have promo code Sleepers. The link is in the description of this video. You can get a first time user deposit bonus up to $1,000. They also have bracket contests. You can win prizes up to $25,000. Really, however you want to bet, they make it happen. You can get player props, futures. They got odds, boost, bonuses, expert picks, and more. Uh, Go bet with us at Sleepers at MyBookie. Link in the description. The line for this game at MyBookie, Gonzaga minus 6.5. I can tell you right now, McNeese plus 6.5 is a go for me. I think this line is like at least three points off from where I would project it. Uh, do you agree with me? What's the play here? What's the McNeese money line? Because that's that's where we're going here. That's where yeah. we're going here. I think McNeese wins. I think McNeese wins by about seven, just with some late free throws, just with some late free throws. Um, but I, I give the Bayou Bandits the edge here. Plus 215 on the money line and my bookie. I'm with you. I love it. I have McNeese winning this game. And uh, You can get a McNeese alt line minus two or minus one and a half. It'd be really Go juicy. Really, really juicy. All right, there's your expert pick from Brian Ralph. Uh, we will be back. We'll have a recap of this game up on the channel along with previews and recaps for every single game of the first round of the NCAA tournament. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.